He's the Human Rights Watch country director who was expelled this past Monday from Israel after the Supreme Court there ruled that the 35-year-old American's advocacy against Israel's settlements in the West Bank amounted to support for the Palestinian-led boycott movement. Omar Shakir, country director for Human Rights Watch, thanks for being with us here on France 24. Thanks for having me. This uh, decision by the Supreme Court that was a protracted uh, move through the courts uh, to and which finally resulted in you being uh, expelled, at this point in time, what does it say about the state of play in Israel? It says that in today's Israel, basic free expression does not include advocacy for Palestinian rights. Human Rights Watch works in 100 countries across the world. We use the exact same international legal reference points and standards. Our work on business and human rights mirrors what we do about fisheries in Thailand, tech companies in China, cotton picking in Uzbekistan, and that basic global call for businesses not to contribute to rights abuse is now grounds for deportation under Israeli law. And the genesis of all this, you might say, is Parliament passing a bill that mandates the expulsion of uh, foreign supporters of BDS, the Boycott, Divestment, Divestment and Sanctions Movement. Does Human Rights Watch support BDS? Human Rights Watch has never called for a boycott of Israel. We do not oppose or support boycotts of any country or any company. What we do is we document abuses by all parties, including businesses. And years of our research has led us to conclude that businesses that operate in settlements invariably contribute to rights abuse. So we call on them to refrain from contributing to those rights abuses in illegal settlements. And the Israeli government has now taken um, the the kind of BDS charge and applied it to really basic run-of-the-mill human rights advocacy that we do. We're going to uh, 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 we're going to we're, 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 we've, we're also been looking on uh, the fact that um, you have right now this uh, uh, push by the European Union uh, when it comes to labeling uh, products that are made uh, in West Bank settlements. Do you think that that hastened your expulsion? Look, I mean, the decision to expel me was made by the Israeli government a year and a half ago. The Supreme Court just on November 5th upheld that decision. The reality is this has been a much years-long effort, and Human Rights Watch is not unique, by the Israeli government to muzzle advocacy around its illegal settlements. The reality is this ruling could justify, you know, even expelling those that were to promote the decision of the European Court of Justice. But this has been many years in the making, and Human Rights Watch is only one of many affected by this decision. The most significantly, those affected Israelis and Palestinians on the ground who continue to fight against these policies that abuse rights. Uh, right now, we've seen the United States come out in favor of recognizing West Bank settlements. Um, we have an Israeli prime minister who's embattled and who's been courting his right flank. If there's a new government in Israel, could it change? Certainly. I mean, look, we've been expelled from countries like Uzbekistan, uh, DRC, Ethiopia that let our researchers back in when governments change. Unfortunately, these policies are now deeply entrenched in the system. And the Supreme Court has put its veneer of legality on the Netanyahu government's assault on human rights defenders. So we hope um, other another Israeli government, you know, should it be formed and take a different character, would make a different decision not only about Human Rights Watch and not only about protecting human rights defenders, but about a 50-plus year occupation defined by institutional discrimination and systematic rights abuse. As a U.S. citizen, were you supported by your own government? The U.S. government at embassy attended every one of my hearings. Um, the State Department, when asked about this, made clear they take the welfare of U.S. citizens seriously and support free expression. But ultimately, the U.S., unlike the rest of the world, there were statements by the European Union, the U.N. Secretary General, American rabbis, Israeli Palestinian civil society groups, calling for a reversal of this decision, the U.S. did not do so. But just like the settlement announcement you referenced, just like Palestinian refugees, the Trump-Netanyahu alliance built on lawlessness has only showed how isolated they are from the global consensus on these issues, including on the illegality of Israeli settlements. So if the Blue and White Coalition forms a government, will it change? I hope so. Um, it's certainly possible, but the reality is Yair Lapid of the Blue and White Party, after the Supreme Court decision, indicated his support for it. Um, while there has been a discussion within these Israeli elections about some aspects of democratic values, it hasn't dealt with the most serious challenge, which is 
you know, 50 plus years of military rule over millions of Palestinians who are deprived of their basic civil and political rights. You were uh, kicked out of Egypt in 2014. What's your next assignment? I'm going to stay on this file. We're not going to let Israel or any other country dictate who covers it. We're going to cover it from the outside in one of our regional offices that don't censor our work, starting in Jordan. And we're going to work on the same issue. So I'm not leaving this file. We're going to redouble our efforts not only to fight against Israel's illegal settlements, but for the protection of Israelis and Palestinians against human rights abuses by all parties. Omar Shakir of Human Rights Watch, many thanks for seeing us. Thank you.